Hi there, I'm Steve with Classic Cars Driven by Data. Today we've got this 1958 MGA in beautiful condition. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about it, but I also want to refer you to some other videos that we've done on this uh, beautiful car. We've looked at uh, all the upgrades that it's had. It's got an, uh, an MGB engine from, we think, about 1970. It's got a uh, five-speed transmission with overdrive, which is really cool. Uh, we've got a video out there that outlines all of those upgrades, but also we've got a video on the cool air intake, which I'll show you briefly in a minute. Uh, we've modified it so that the air going into the engine comes from the very front of the car, so the coldest air is going into the engine, which gives you the most power, the most fuel economy, and the least cooling load on the cooling system. So that's a really good deal. You want to learn about that. What else have we got? We've got a video where we actually um, have been talking about how to measure air fuel ratio using the fast air fuel ratio oxygen sensor. And this is available from, um, from fast. You can look at it, look, look it up online. It's not that expensive. It's easy to use. You just use a laptop, hook it up to your exhaust pipe, drive the vehicle and you'll get a pretty good measure of what the air fuel ratio is in real time over the road. So I highly recommend that video. And um, what is the other video? The other video, we go into a deep dive on the H4 uh, carburetor, um, the SUH4, which is what's fitted to this vehicle. Even though it's got uh, an MGB engine, the uh, air handling and the carburation all comes from, I think, the original MGA engine. So with that, let's do a very quick walk around. So this is really a beautiful specimen. Um, by the way, we've got a beautiful day here in Rancho Santa Fe, California. It's the spring. We're just about getting into the spring. We're getting COVID behind us, and we're pretty excited to get out in this vehicle and uh, have a great time here. So you look at the grill uh, in really good condition. The original Lucas fog lamps. The little headlamps, they're not LEDs, of course, they're old school, but they're quite adequate. And you see the paint job. What I will tell you is that this isn't the original paint job. Originally, when it left the factory, it was a uh, Tyrolite green, which um, I would rather have this color. I think this is spectacular. Um, but in odd places on the chassis, you can actually see the, uh, the original green. So um, you see the wire wheels, they're beautiful. I much prefer those wire wheels to the uh, Dunlop solid steel wheels. And right in there, you can maybe just make out that it's got front wheel disc brakes. So that's another upgrade that I'm very appreciative of. The drum brakes are, well, they're adequate at best, but uh, these disc brakes are just uh, so much better. And let's face it, being able to stop in a hurry is pretty darn useful. So there you see the, uh, the front wheels and in great condition once again with the knockoffs that uh, you know you just spin them off change the wheel pop the wheel back on spin it back on again so sort of racing style knockoffs versus you know five lug nuts um, so what else can we show you if you um, you want to just peek into the cockpit a little bit I'm with my trusty assistant Ethan today um, and he's got a hold of the camera obviously but in the let me open that for you, Ethan. You might, you might be able to get a slightly better view. It's got a nice um, burr walnut dash. Uh, I've done some modifications. You can see, strangely enough, it has a USB port right in the dash, which um, I think I can confidently say was not an original piece of equipment. And uh, I put a smaller steering wheel on there. I think that is a 14 inch, and originally it was a huge 21 inch. And I'm six foot two, and I don't fit in there with the 21 inch wheel. There just isn't enough room. I find my right leg is right up against the gear lever, and I'm unable to change gear effectively. And while we're there, what else have we got? So we took out the old radio mobile radio. I've kept it, it can be put back if needed. It wasn't really working, and I just replaced it with that little MG um, vanity plate there, which I think looks looks pretty good but otherwise the car is pretty much standard and uh, so if we back out Ethan maybe we could just say a word about the canopy top or the convertible top um, this is easy to fit and easy to remove completely so in a week or two once we're behind uh, once we got the rains behind us in California 
I intend to take this off and then through the summer we'll just run with the open top and it'll be, uh, be terrific really easy to remove and I'm anticipating putting a video out real soon on how to install this and how to remove it. So we've got a nice little uh, luggage rack here and we've got the MG logo. Um, what else have we got? There's the filler cap, no security whatsoever. Just pull this little tab and it opens and you can refill. Um, but really a nice car. I'm very happy with it. So let me pop the hood and we'll talk a little bit about some of the changes under hood. So the, the hood pull is just inside the cabin here. So you just yank on that and it releases the hood. And then just on the right hand side here, there's a little push, a latch, which you pull and then you pull down the support like that it's a bit of a bit old school i'm afraid and there you have it there's the mgb engine uh, in great condition 1800 cc's in theory it pulls about 95 horsepower i'm really not too sure if i'm getting the full uh, horsepower or not but um, but it's anyway it's an 1800 cc or 1.8 liter uh, mgb engine here you see the two su carburetors the h4 carbs so the working principle of the carbs is uh, it's a variable choke or a variable venturi carburetor which um, is designed really to compensate the fuel flow in proportion to the airflow. So it, essentially it measures the airflow and then with a tapered needle it meters the fuel flow in proportion. At least that's the theory. So there's a video out there that you may want to follow up on. I go into great detail on how it works. There's a pretty good animation there showing how the variable choke interacts and pulls the piston and moves the uh, sliding nozzle. Um, the other thing I'd like to show you under here before we close is the cool air intake right behind the carburetors. So right in here, Ethan, if you can see that. So when the, when the car was first procured, it had individual filters right at these two carburetors. And so the air would come from under hood, all this space around here, be drawn through the filter and straight into the carburetor. Well, it's pretty attractive. I mean, it looks great, but it's a bit of a disaster from a performance point of view. And so there's a video that you may want to follow up on that talks all about the cool air intake and why it's so valuable. Let me show you what it does. So it, it's a manifold here, and you see this hose. This hose goes all the way to the front of the vehicle. There's a filter under there you maybe can't see it too well but that's okay take my word for it there's a filter so air comes in through the grill fresh air the coolest air available straight into the filter through the hose and then into the carbs so the carburetors are then getting the coldest air available at any point in time and as i said a little bit earlier that's really good for fuel economy it's good for knock protection or pinking pinging whatever term you want to use you don't want that it'll destroy your engine uh, so you can operate with regular um, gasoline fuel you don't need any special high octane uh, it reduces the cooling load on the cooling system because it's colder air that's going in here and uh, all around it's a good thing so what was wrong with the original setup is that the air coming through the radiator is very hot it's cooling the cooling water, which is at about 100 Celsius or 200 uh, Fahrenheit ballpark. So the air in this space is really hot. You've got an exhaust manifold underneath here. That's radiating heat. The engine itself is radiating heat and convecting heat. And so that warm air is being drawn into the engine. Pretty much a disaster. Um, I, I know it looks great and people like to see it. But my advice is uh, fit a cool air intake. You'll get a few more horsepower you might get some better miles per gallon and your engine may last a little bit longer. So what else have we got? We've got a five-speed transmission and I think in the uh, video about upgrades to the MGA we do talk about the transmission ratios and why that's a really good deal. This car will cruise at 70 at about 3500 RPM so um, it really facilitates uh, you know, good performance and uh, cruising at speed versus the original four-speed box. 
so I think that's about it, folks. Um, so once again, hit the, hit the subscribe button if you like this video. Um, hit the like button, and better yet, if you want to leave a comment, uh, give us some feedback. How are we doing? Could we do better? Could we do more? Did you like it? Uh, and we'd very much appreciate it. So thank you so much. Look forward to uh, providing you some more videos in the near future. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button below and we will notify you of upcoming editions.